You know, when I was a young girl, I got pretty good grades in school all the way up until you got to the conduct section of my report card. And then things kind of went downhill from there. So I was pretty stubborn. I was headstrong. I took it as a personal challenge if you told me that I couldn't do something. And I was really competitive with myself. Um, we didn't realize it at the time, but we were getting insight into the lessons and the strategies that would shape the rest of my life. See, people didn't know a lot about entrepreneurial thinking back in the 80s. But it turns out that the same strategies entrepreneurs were using to build their businesses, I was using at a really young age to create my life. Which begs the question, what if you could become your own greatest entrepreneurial endeavor? And that's a pretty empowering way to think. So let's look at some of the lessons that entrepreneurship can teach us about living our lives. Lesson number one is to be an opportunity enthusiast. Entrepreneurs are always looking for and creating their own opportunity. So let me tell you about a company that has embodied being an opportunity enthusiast for decades now. So this company started out as a hand soap company, all the way up until the early 1930s, when they realized that people actually needed a good wallpaper cleaner. You see, people were heating their homes with coal at the time, and soot would get all over the walls. It was really hard to clean. So this hand soap company created a white, putty-like substance that could be pressed into the walls. The soot would stick and it would come off without damaging the wallpaper. And this was a huge success. All the way up until we changed the way that we heated our homes. So as coal was used less and less, people didn't need as much wallpaper cleaner. But about this time, the company learned that teachers had been bringing this product into their classrooms to be used in arts and crafts projects. So yet again, they embodied being an opportunity enthusiast and they turned their putty-like wallpaper cleaner into a colorful putty-like toy that we all know as Play-Doh, right? So how can we embody these lessons in our own life? Well, we can understand that life is a pretty limited resource. So we should constantly be challenging ourselves to grow, to learn. We should also understand that sometimes opportunities are gonna be a little bit overwhelming. But that doesn't mean that we should automatically say no to them. Time and time again, I've faced opportunities that were slightly bigger than what I thought my skill set might be capable of. And I could have easily said no, but most of the time, I've said yes. Now, don't get me wrong, I've gone on to have many moments of panic while I figured things out. But I've always challenged myself to learn what needed to be learned to make the most of these opportunities. And that can be a little bit scary sometimes. So the next time that you find yourself saying no to something, just because it might be a little bit uncomfortable or intimidating, I want you to remember one simple activity. If you would, reach out and grasp your hands in front of you like this. Pay attention to what thumb you naturally put on top. Now, if you'll let go and do the same activity again, but switch it up, put the opposite thumb on top. How's that feel? It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's a little bit uncomfortable. So anytime we challenge our comfort zones or we force ourselves to do something that's different than the way that we're used to doing it, it can be a little weird and uncomfortable. And that's absolutely okay. It's to be expected even. You know, when I first started working at NC State, I was asked to help build an entrepreneurship education program. Now let me tell you, back then, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how I was gonna figure it all out. That first semester that they put me in a classroom teaching, I honestly have no idea how I didn't pass out every single day. I was so scared. But I figured it out. And since then, that's been almost 20 years ago. Since then, I've earned opportunities that have been both big and small, that have carried my work all around the world to some really interesting places like Russia and Saudi Arabia and Japan. The one thing that I've noticed has been consistent throughout all of these opportunities has been the combination of both fear and excitement. For me, that fear part just never goes away. And I've learned that for me, a good balance is being about 50% excited and about 50% scared to death. Those are the times that I tend to thrive with opportunities. But each of you will have to figure out what your own best balance is so that you can become your own best version of an opportunity enthusiast. Now, lesson number two that entrepreneurship teaches us about life is to appreciate the power of perspective. Now, there's a concept that's known as functional fixation. It's the idea that once we've been told what something is supposed to do, 
we struggle to see it in alternative ways. So when we see an object like this, we most often think, oh, it's a screwdriver. We don't automatically also see an ice pick or a paint can opener. And this can result in a type of perception paralysis, if you will. And entrepreneurs understand just how dangerous perception paralysis can be. So they constantly surround themselves with things to help them see the world through new eyes and through new perspectives. So let me tell you a story about a young scientist who truly understood the power of perspective. So do you know why purple is considered the color of royalty? Well, it's because for thousands of years, purple dye was incredibly difficult to make. So purple fabric was rare and thus it was really expensive. So the only people who could afford it were oftentimes royals all the way up until the mid 1800s. Now stick with me for a minute because the story's gonna take a slight turn. In the mid 1800s, malaria was a huge health concern and they used quinine to treat malaria. So a young scientist named William Henry Perkin was in his lab and he was attempting to create a synthetic version of quinine. Now he had one failed attempt after another. He just could not get this right. And after one of these failed attempts, he went to clean out his equipment and he noticed the solution inside had turned this really interesting purple color. Now, he had accidentally just created the world's very first ever synthetic dye. Now he could have viewed this situation as you know, a malaria scientist would, as just yet another failed attempt. But Mr. Perkin took a different approach. He saw it with a different perspective and he thought, oh my gosh, I just created purple. And he would go on to start a very successful business mass producing this dye, and he gave purple fabric to the world. So how have I embodied this in my own life? Well, when I was getting ready to come to college, I got a lot of advice about what other people thought I should study, what other people thought would be a good career path for me. So when I got to school, I decided to study accounting. And as I got into my advanced accounting classes, I had a realization, I really didn't like it. It wasn't that much fun for me. It was fun for other people. It wasn't that much fun for me. But I thought, okay, so if I get out of the classroom and into business world, maybe it'll be a little bit more exciting. So I went out and I found startup companies who hired me to come in and set up their books and do their payroll and their invoicing. And you know, I was pretty cheap because I hadn't finished my degree quite yet. And they were broke because they were startups. So we were like a perfect match. And you know what I learned? I learned that I really didn't want to do accounting. <laughs> it really still wasn't all that much fun for me. Now, I could have viewed this as a failed attempt at a career, but that would have been perception paralysis for me. Because from a different perspective, my journey into accounting was a huge success. It showed me that I love the chaotic environment of a startup. I love the crisis control, the problem solving, the excitement that goes along with it and I was starting to see possibilities for other career choices. So how can each of you embody the power of perspective in your own life, starting like right now? You can surround yourself with people who think really differently than you do, and you can appreciate every single one of those differences. If you're a detail person, have a big picture thinker who can help you brainstorm in new ways. And if you like data and analytics, have someone who can help you view the world through the lens of empathy and emotional intelligence. You know, Oliver Wendell Holmes said that one's mind, once stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimensions. And that's exactly what the power of perspective does for us. Now, lesson number three that entrepreneurship teaches us about life is that we've got to learn to cut ourselves some slack sometimes. Entrepreneurs understand that this is the only way to survive the ups and downs that just come with entrepreneurial thinking. But in entrepreneurship, you know, we hear a lot about the IPOs and the million dollar valuations. We don't hear about the months when there were no customers or the weeks when you weren't sure how you were going to make payroll. And in life, it works much the same way. We see these edited and curated versions of reality. And we start, suddenly start to think that we're alone in the problems that we face that we're somehow an outlier when it comes to something as common as just having a bad day. You know, I think uh, former Secretary of State Colin Powell probably said it best when he said, you cannot slay the dragon every day. Some days the dragon wins. And he was absolutely right. Some days life is just going to knock you down. 
But entrepreneurs know that you always have the choice to stand up and fight back. And that's exactly what I had to do at graduation. So at graduation, I was earning an accounting degree and I was earning a finance degree. And I distinctly remember as I walked down off of that stage at graduation, I was certain of only three things in my life right that, right that moment. One was that I didn't want to work in accounting. Two, I did not want to work in finance. And three, I did not want to move back home with my family for the rest of my life. So there I was with my two degrees and absolutely no clue what the rest of my life was going to look like. But I figured it out through trial and error and research, just like any good entrepreneur would do. And since then, I have had the opportunity to work with a team building what you now know of as NC State Entrepreneurship. It has been an absolute blast. And a few years ago, we finally ended up on the rankings as one of the top entrepreneurship programs in the country. We were so proud. But to some people in the outside world, it looked like we were an overnight success. There were even a couple of people who said, oh, people at NC State, they were just lucky. Let me tell you, we worked really, really hard to earn that luck. And I've learned that hard is just simply part of the process. But so is fun and excitement and adventure. And we should embrace absolutely all of it. You know, 12-year-old me had no idea that this would become my life, that I'd get to travel the world and have the privilege of impacting students' lives every single day. But I am so grateful that this is what it turned out to be for me. You know, years ago, I read a book, Who Moved My Cheese? And in it, the author asked a question. He said, what would you do if you weren't afraid? It's a simple question. It's a really powerful one, though. Because once we find a way to get to the other side of afraid, we can embrace opportunities with enthusiasm. We learn to appreciate all the different perspectives in the world that can help us see new things. And we learn that we can give ourselves permission. We don't have to have all the answers all the time. We can cut ourselves some slack. Now, it's these lessons and so many more from the world of entrepreneurial thinking that can help all of us on our own journeys towards becoming our own personal best entrepreneurial endeavors. Thank you so much. <laughs>